what up? Welcome to image walkthrough number two. So this week I'm going to be walking you through my light blaster spiff image. So this image was created around one or two years ago and what the light blaster is, it's a cool piece of equipment where you stick a flash gun on one end and you stick a lens on the other. You can basically use that uh, tool then to fire cool patterns of light onto models, onto walls and you can think of lots of different but creative ways to use it, it's pretty cool. So what I did is, because obviously I'm into sci-fi and 80s movies, things like that, I shot some red pattern onto the wall, and then I had a model in a SWAT outfit, and I gelled a blue flash and lit him with blue, so he kind of had this cool 80s sci-fi red and blue feel going on. So in this speed edit again, I'm going to commentate, I'm just going to talk over what I'm doing, if I need to I'll pause it and elaborate on things, what I'm doing. So cool, sit back, enjoy. Peace! Hey everyone, so here is the image in Photoshop, so before I actually get into this I want to take you down and just go through the images in Lightroom. So again I'm just going to take you through some of these slides and just show you the images before, uh, well straight out of camera actually, so using the light blaster. So let's just have a quick look up here. So as you can see here is my model, before he's in his sweat outfit, uh, I lit him with this flash here with a blue gel on. Uh, I did change things around later, this was just practice, but as you can see, this is the light blaster here firing onto the wall. So let's just come back out of there. So, as you can see, he went down, did quite a lot of test shots. Again, now we've got the blue gel on the model. So if I just click through these, here's another test. Yeah, here we have the model again, but for some reason this gridded background, although I liked it, it didn't seem to be working that well. Obviously, I had the model's smoking a cigarette as well, just, I don't know, because it looked cool. Uh, I'm not advocating smoking children, so do not listen to me, but uh, yeah, yeah, smoke always looks pretty cool in images. So as we go through, here we are again, this, is, this was looking better, we're cropped in a little bit, kind of has some, like a, a Terminator feel, uh, and then again pointing the gun, it's uh, going through in all various poses. And after using the grid quite a few times, I wanted something a little bit different, just did not seem to be working for me. And then I found this slide here, which reminds me of some kind of 80s pattern from like Karate Kid or something like that. So I thought I would add that into the slide, fire it onto the wall, and then have the model in front like so. So as you can see, it just seemed to gel with the style a lot better. That's the final image, what was for Spiffy, the light blaster. And then, as you can see, is a few more efforts. So let's go back now to the speed edit, and let's start. So as you can see, this is, uh, I opened the image into camera raw. I pulled up the shadows a little bit, added a little bit of sharpening, which uh, is one thing I always do in camera raw. The image, uh, I like to add a little bit of sharpening, especially if I want it to be kind of a stylized, gritty image. I will add a little bit of sharpening in camera raw beforehand. So now I've brought it into Photoshop. So the next thing I did was clean up the light on this corner here. So a lot of my images I used to shoot with one light, and I would just do, I would have the lights peeking in in the corner here. So I just got into a system of uh, using a blank layer and usually either using content aware to just get rid of it or I would use a paint, use a brush and just kind of paint it away by sampling areas. So as you can see I was using content aware I believe on this. Actually no, I went with the paint method so as you can see, quick and easy. So now zooming in, dodging and burning again, uh, curves dodge and burn. As you can see here in the layers panel, uh, I use curves that you burn. I do have an action now, what just kind of does it straight away, but it's very easy, simple setup to find out. So if anyone wants to learn how to do that, just me message me in the comments and I'll get back to you and I will let you know how to do that. So again, now just dodging away at the image, dodging and burning. So I always start off on the face, uh, and I think, I believe I didn't go over board on this image kind of dodging burn wise I just wanted to bring out some of the details the image was quite dark so I just adding some kind of highlights in there just helps give that stylized feel so again just going through the body and dodging 
Now I'm just doing a little bit of burning, but again, because the image is dark, we don't need to burn too much. But again, it's nice to add a little bit of form to the image. And we was going for a stylized painterly feel. That's some kind of 80s artwork, so this we do need to dodge and burn to get to that place. So now I'm just kind of messing around with the crop, twisting the image. It's nice to have some kind of uh, angle on the stylized image. I think people call it Dutch angle in movies. Uh, I like to have an angle in my images, especially when trying to stylize them. So what I've done here is just duplicated the dodge and burn again. Once you've done it once, you can then duplicate the group and just double that strength and then tone it down with opacity. So now I am going into my brush panel and I'm just going to add a little bit of atmosphere like smoke to the image. Again, the guy's smoking, so maybe the, the whole kind of area around him would have smoke. So as you can see, very over the top here. Clinton, why are you doing it, that's drunk? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yeah, what I do is then I'll just lower it down with opacity. Sometimes I do paint in things very strong, but I'll lower them, lower them down in opacity and then mask them in and out with layer masks. So now I am sampling the cigarette and just adding a little bit more smoke coming in from the cigarette, just enhancing what's already there. It looks like I'm going into a stock library. So again, usually in images where stylizing that kind of go for uh, lens flares and kind of light links and things like that. So again, this image wasn't a very complicated image, I just added little bits here and there. I actually believe I got rid of this lens flare eventually because it just was far too strong and it just kind of took away from the image. But here I'm just adding it in and now changing the hue with the hue saturation adjustment layer and then moving it around uh, putting the lens flare into a screen blend mode which gets rid of the blacks and just leaves the light areas yeah as you can see it is pretty strong so that's, that's yep i got rid of that again digging into the depths of my stock images uh, for some lens flare from Raw Exchange. Let's see if this one was any better. Again, you're doing the same thing using the hue saturation adjustment layer to change the hue of the lens flare and bringing it in and just flipping it to a screen blend mode. I quite like that now actually, but I believe I did not go with <laughs> with any lens flare. So this is just a process which goes on when you're editing an image, any image. There's always a bit of playing around, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Don't just do something and then keep it because you've already done it. Get rid of it and try something else. Uh, here we go. This one I believe I did use. Kind of, it could be f little embers of fire kind of blowing in the air with our hero pointing his gun towards something in that direction. So now just adding a bit of Gaussian blur to the, to the, uh, I don't know what you call them, embers or dust particles like the particles there just blurring that a little bit because it's in the foreground adding more dodge and burn wow lots of dodge and burn <laughs> uh, really going for that stylized feel adding some more smoke in I believe adding a little bit of adding some light leaks into the image coming from the red behind just kind of linking the light over the costume and the helmet just to kind of blend it in a little bit better now you 
using Topaz uh, detail just to bring some clarity to the image. The Topaz is a plugin I use in quite a lot and is also I use Nick Color Effects 4 as well for things like this. Just now adding some contrast by duplicating the, the, the layer and adding it onto soft light. A little bit curves to add a vignette to focus your eye into the center. Again, using a curves adjustment. So if you use curves adjustment for things like this, like vignettes, you can because it's non-destructive you can always go back in and just kind of double click on this icon here and you will be able to re-edit the vignette or like adjust the darkness and the strength things like that so it's always good to use layers and to work in a non-destructive way so now just going into sharpen this is an old way I used to sharpen, I don't use this way anymore. It's just a very subtle sharpening using the soft light blend mode and a little bit of blur. I tend to use smart sharpen now which I feel is just better. So once I've sharpened the image again, just kind of going around the edges and focusing the, the eye in the middle. So now, what's happening now is, once I uh, finished in Photoshop, the image goes back into Lightroom, because I use Lightroom for like cataloging and organizing, but also in Lightroom, I will add final touches to images. So what I'm doing here now is sharpening the image, adding some final sharpening. Uh, and what I do is, if you hold down Alt, when you're on the masking, it shows us here, and it shows you how much you're masking off, and the areas which will be sharpened. So as you can see, I put this up to 81. And again, if you hold down Alt when you're adding the sharpening amount, it will show the image in black and white. So you can see the sharpening of the image a little bit clearer than when there's color in it. So now I just added a bit more of a tint up at the top. Playing with the temperature a little bit as well. And that, my friends, is the final image. So again, I was going for that kind of 80s neon sci-fi feel. I wanted it to be painterly, which the Dodge and Burners added that kind of stylized painterly feel. Uh, not that much done to the image really. I think the image took maybe about 30 minutes to edit. Again, already because I'd already got like the light in the camera, and there wasn't lots and lots to do. Just added some particles and dodge and burn, messed with tone, but uh, yeah, so see, it's, it's not hard to create these kind of images and anyone could do it. Just a little bit of pre planning, maybe of using the light blaster, but apart from that, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you've learned some new things. If anyone ever has any questions, I would love to hear any com comments or questions, so I'll leave, one, leave them in the YouTube comments and I'll definitely get back to you. And if you want to learn more little tips and techniques like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks guys.